What's going on guys, Noah Brewer here. I'm about to take a flight to LA in a couple days, so I wanted to push this video out really quickly. Um, been working on it for a while. Um, but basically, cold traffic product testing tips. I'm basically answering common questions that I get a lot in the comment section and a lot of DMs. But let's have no delay, let's just get into it. All right, so cold traffic, uh, product testing, common questions. I'm just gonna go over this real quick. We just got some common questions that I hear throwing around in groups and uh, people dropping comments and stuff. Just wanna clear the water a little bit. Um, so what types of things should you target? Um, basically simple interests and uh, mixing simple interests. So the example that I put here is we're selling a golf putter. So a simple interest would be just golfing and then maybe narrow it down by engaged shoppers. And then um, a mixed interest would be like, for example, golfing and then you narrow down by putter. So um, those are basically what I do. Like when I'm just starting a new campaign, I either do something really basic and obvious like this, um, or I'll do um, something a little bit more specific here, which either one works. And most of the time, like I do a pretty good mixture of both of these. So a good combination of like some really basic ones and then maybe a couple more specific or more complicated ones, um, those do really good as well. So basically, the easier your product is to target for, the higher chance, the higher the chances um, of it being successful. Now, this is this is just true to a certain extent. Like I've seen a lot of things that are difficult to target for do really well, but mainly because we were keeping it really simple. Like we weren't trying to get too creative with it. Um, but in general, you know, products that have a much broader audience will be a pain in the ass to target for. Meaning, like, something that's really general would be really, really general. Such as, like, just targeting females who are interested in fashion. Like, that's not really something that you should be targeting. It should be a little bit more specific than that. How do I pick my interests? So, this is a thing that a lot of people don't know that you can do. Um, a lot of people use the Audience Insights tool, which I have never personally used. Um, I know how to use it. I've done it before, but it's not something that I do like when I'm actually creating new campaigns. So what I usually do is I just target the most uh, the most obvious thing that you can think of. Like let's just use the golfing example again. Um, if you're selling golf balls, that's the example I put. So golf balls, you just want to type in golf or, or golfing, whatever interest is available there, and then uh, you click a button called suggestions, and it's like right next to where you type in golf, right? And basically this, you know, clicking suggestions will give you a bunch of different suggestions based on what you put in. Um, now this might be a little bit difficult to do if you have like a really old ad account, but on newer ad accounts, um, it works like, it works like a charm. Like it'll bring up a ton of different interests that you might not have even th thought of that are really good ideas. And uh, just that, you know, just that little suggestions button has helped increase my results, you know, just because it brings me more interests that are more related to what I do. So that's how I that's how I pick my interests. You know, I mainly use the suggestions tab. Uh, what things should you avoid when when you're product testing? So, um, getting creative with the targeting. Now, let me let me clarify. Getting too creative with the targeting. Um, like if you're selling golf, you don't want to do like golfing narrowed down by putter, narrowed down by online shopping, narrowed down by this and that. You know, you don't want to do it like super complicated, guys. Like you don't want to get too creative. You know, I like to keep it like one or two things. You know, if I'm doing two things, I'm doing it in this format. And if I'm doing one thing, I'm either just doing it with engaged shoppers or without. You know, I keep it really simple. I don't try to get too creative with it. You know, like even even golfing, you know, targeting things like um, different sports and stuff. Like you don't have to put a lot of thought into it. It should come to mind pretty easily. You know, so you don't want to get too creative with it. Uh, you should avoid leaving the expand interest box checked. Now, I've seen a lot of ads where this works, and that's good, um, but in the beginning, uh, really any in any time of your growth, you should always be focused on trying to figure out what's working so that you can focus more on what's working. And if you click expand interest, basically what it does is it removes the limiter. So when you choose an interest, it'll limit itself to only showing the ad to people inside of that one interest. If you click expand interest, it'll allow Facebook to target people outside of the interest that you uh, put in 
in order to get more sales. Now, like I said, not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, but it's not a good thing if you're trying to split test because you won't know what interest is bringing the sales because Facebook will be going out and trying to figure it out. So not something that I want to do, not something that I ever do, you know, just making it simple. Another thing is going crazy with making ad sets. Um, everybody has a product where they know it's going to be a banger. They love it. You know, they, they have that gut feeling, right? Um, but that doesn't mean that you should sway away from the process, um, you know, creating seven ad sets, maybe 10, you know, depending on what your budget is. But it doesn't mean that you should make like 30 of them. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, don't let your emotions get in the way and just stick to what's working. And if you want to follow my strategy, I have a ton of videos teaching what I do. Um, but yeah, just don't go crazy with creating ad sets because if you jerk the, the algorithm like that and you just throw a bunch of crap at it, um, it's really not going to, it's not going to create much consistency for you thinking about the long term. So, um, yeah, I just, I keep it simple. I don't do a lot. Um, but you don't, you really don't need to, to get crazy results. Like I just had a store, um, we created five ad sets on its first day and it, it's done a thousand in sales in three days. So we didn't go crazy with, it. you know, we created five, we put it out there. We, we see how it does and, uh, we go from there. So Another, you know, like this is one one important thing that you should avoid sticking with a product for way too long. Um, what is way too long? So for me, if I spend like over 150 bucks without a product making at least a few sales, uh, it's time to move on. You know, like there's I, I just explained this in a group like there's three different stages that um, usually a new business model goes through. And that's basically the introduction, which is where people are making a ton of money. Um, it's super easy. You don't need much strategy. You know, it's basically the boom, right? And then you get the exposure, which is where everybody starts hearing about the business model and everybody starts doing it. This is where like competition pops up. It starts to get a little bit more challenging. Um, and then after that is the impact, which is, you know, something big that happens in the industry, like, uh, and it affects everybody else. So um, think about like email marketing, Basically, what what happened was people were collecting emails, you know, with ads, and then they were just spamming those emails. And uh, there were a few guys who just took it way too far, you know, scamming people, um, sending them 10 emails a day, um, which was, I mean, it wasn't, scamming people was obviously bad, but the spamming people, the problem isn't that people were doing it. The problem is that it was unregulated. So um, once this impact happened, the government basically came in and they put laws in place that stopped people from doing that. Um, so, which is honestly a good thing for the market, but coming from a standpoint of looking at how a business model develops over time, uh, you got to be aware that stuff like that happens and you got to be aware of what stage you're in. And honestly, for the past year, I think we've been held up in the, uh, the exposure state, the exposure stage, which is basically everybody's hearing about drop shipping and, everybody's doing it, you know, there's competition now, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot more competition now than there was two years ago. Um, but it's still fairly easy to find a winning product. You know, it's still fairly easy to scale up. Um, you shouldn't be spending that much money per product until that impact happens. Cause, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but there's, you know, there's going to be regulations. More people are going to know about it. It's just going to be more difficult to find a winning product. You know what I'm, I hope you know what I'm saying. But in the stage that we're at right now, um, you know, I really don't think that it takes more than 150 bucks to find a winning product. Um, I might have just overcomplicated that, but every single winning product that I've found always takes off like in the first few days. You know, like you don't want to stick with it too long because, yes, technically, if you have the right strategy, you can stick with a product that doesn't work right away and make it work. Right. I've even done that. I don't recommend it though, because you should be taking advantage of how easy it is right now, because if you don't, you're going to wish that you did once it's not as easy anymore. So that's my tip. You know, don't, don't stick with a product for way too long because you just don't have to yet. You know, like the, it's not difficult right now. You know what I mean? Like it's very simple now. So just take advantage of that, you know? So why, why do I only do one interest per ad set? Um, this is it should be obvious, but I'll just say it. I say it in all my videos pretty much. Um, I like to know it's working. I don't like stacking interest at all because if it works, you don't know which interest is converting. Now, 
one thing that you can do, which I do not do for e-commerce at all, but I do do it for lead generation, is a little bit of a different game. But you can stack interests, and then if it works, you can do them all individually after it works, and then see which one uh, works. So this does work, but at the end of the day, either way, you're gonna have to test them all individually, or else you'll never know. So like it, it's just it just makes sense to only do one interest per ad set, especially with e-commerce because it's it's a lot different than lead generation, um, and I don't really like mixing those two. You know, they're two completely different things. So one interest per ad set is just what I've always done. Um, that way you can see which interests are working. You can see like, okay, golfing is working, golfers is working, but Tiger Woods isn't working. Maybe I should do some more golfing ad sets. You know what I mean? So stacking ad sets, I don't mess with it just because I like knowing what works. So what should the audience size be when choosing interest? So don't really look at audience size as much as most people do. Um, you know, I'll target an audience of 80 million the same way I target an audience of 500,000. Um, I hope that makes sense. Like, I don't look at them in any different way just based on how many people are in the audience. If I'm looking at the previous ad sets that I've created, and I create a lot of ad sets, right? Like, a lot. You know, I've been doing this for about a year. I've scaled like six stores to six figures, you know, I've done over a million in revenue just this year. I've created a fuck ton of ad sets. Um, and never have I ever seen um, a pattern with the audience size affecting the way that it performs. Never ever. I've actually seen audience sizes of 20,000 people do really, really, really good. And I hear other influencers out there talking about how that's like the death sentence. Like you shouldn't do that because it's horrible you'll get horrible results whatever like it worked for me i don't pay attention to how many people are in the audience i pay attention to what i'm actually targeting um two completely different things if all you do is pay attention to audience size you're focusing on the wrong thing that's pretty much my point here all right guys that was the video i hope you enjoyed it i hope there was a lot of value in it um, those are some really really common questions that i get almost every day um, in the DMs, comments, uh, text messages, all that stuff. But as for this video, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm Noah Brewer, and I'm out. Peace.